Have you ever gone to a bachelor or bachelorette party where things got a bit wild? Heck, make that any party. Like, I don't know, one in which people got into a fight, or someone had a failed spur of the moment marriage proposal. Well, if the answer is yes, I somehow doubt it got as wild as the party in Anglerfish. And if the answer is no, well, I'm proud of you. In Anglerfish, you play as a guy who goes with his friends to a bachelor party in the Anglerfish bar. You're all dressed as schoolgirls, which is the theme of the party, and whoever collects the most amount of phone numbers from women gets to be the best man. So off you go to charm the ladies. Except that about five minutes in, all of them turn into vampires and rip your head clean off your body. See what I mean? Worst party ever! But then, you respawn outside. Something's changed. You can now access a new room, and most importantly, you now have a way to fight back. And so begins the tale of the game Anglerfish. The game has you running over and over into the Anglerfish bar. Your character is basically stuck in a loop, and the only way to break it is by uncovering the secrets behind the bar and escaping it. The thing is, as you can tell by the fact that you get your head ripped clean off your body within 5 minutes, this game uses death as a mechanic. And if I'm being honest, it does so brilliantly. Even if with some caveats. This isn't a roguelite like you're used to in which everything is randomized, no. In Anglerfish, all rooms are the same and the path you must take to continue the story never changes. What does change, however, is what you're going to find on your way through this path, and it usually reacts to how you died. Sometimes, a puzzle solution will change. Other times, monsters will show up where there were none before. In some runs, you'll actually find pretty funny gags. I would give you an example or two or three, but honestly, I kinda want you to experience it yourself. Oh, and there may or may not be a dog outside the bar that asks you cryptic questions every time you go in. I haven't been able to work out the actual meaning behind them, or if they change anything, aside from a couple that do change obvious things. The same source page also says that you can pet the dog, and I'll put the developers on blast here, I was unable to do so, and you can't just play with my feelings like that. The name of their studio, Professional Villains, fits pretty well. But the truth is that, just as I haven't been able to work out the secrets of the dog messages, there are loads of things I haven't seen. This game has lots of secrets, which I really appreciate. The Steam store page shows some situations and even entire rooms in its photos that I never got to, despite beating the content currently in the game. Plus, some other content is only available through means outside of the game. Namely, one door that requires a password in their website, a safe that requires a combination available in a free game of theirs, and even a door that will only open after the game gets 100 reviews on Steam. Furthermore, even the ending of the game is a secret. You do have an ending, but the true ending is only coming December 15th in a massive update that is roughly the size of the current game, which took me about 2 hours to beat. It sucks to have something so major like a true ending not be released with the game, but oh well. As the game itself pointed out, even Nintendo does that nowadays. Looking at you, Monster Hunter Rise. Doesn't make it suck any less, but what you gonna do? The gameplay itself is okay. It's a 2 2.5D game that has you walking around with a shotgun and shooting enemies. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that, can you? <laughs> the enemies usually die in two shots, which can turn into one if you hit them from behind. It's very basic, but it works okay. Well, except sometimes, such as the one on camera right now, in which I assume the depth perception of the 2.5D threw me off and you end up missing when you think you should have hit. I also read reports of people having issues hitting point-blank shots, but I didn't run into that, thankfully. When you die, you get to go back to the start and run through the map again. The whole run back did annoy me at times, especially in the beginning. You can't sprint, which isn't that much of an issue because your character does move at an okay speed, and you do unlock shortcuts that allows you to skip quite a few rooms at a time. In the beginning, however, I do recall having to walk quite a bit every time I died, despite having shortcuts activated, 
But as you progress, they get more generous with shortcuts and even checkpoints, and this stops being an issue altogether. This is good because this game is not afraid to kill you. In fact, a lot of it is trial and error. You will end up getting yourself killed because you'll do something that insta-kills you and you have absolutely no way of knowing until it happens. Then, of course, you won't do it again. Or, you know, maybe you will if you're particularly sadistic. I won't judge out loud. The game also has collectibles in the form of gnomes that you can find hidden throughout the bar on the ground. Again, I have no idea what picking them all up does, nor how many there are. But they can be seen peeking out from behind some furniture, and you have to shoot them to collect them. They then show up in your safe room, the room in which you get your shotgun every time you respawn. In this room you can also get tips from the bartender, and even drinks that give you special effects, such as hiding your head. This is a bad effect because the way you know you can interact with something on your screen is when your character's ears perk up. In fact, most, if not all, drinks have negative or neutral effects, so I ended up never using them. I imagine there are unique events tied to them though, so it might be a good idea to experiment. While it may not seem like it, there is a story tied to the game. Unfortunately though, I can't speak to how good it is because the true ending is not currently available. What I have seen so far, however, is nice, although predictable. Every once in a while, you'll find hints to it in the bars, such as pictures depicting the main character's past. And while I can't say much about it without spoiling anything, I will say that it did make me curious for the true ending. And even that seems like it won't be the actual end, as the developers will add a third playthrough with even more storyline on January 19th. With a free DLC coming afterwards if the game sells 5,000 copies by then. The game also has lots of references either to YouTubers, such as the Manly Badass Hero demo, or to other horror games, such as the discs shown on camera right now. And speaking of discs, some tracks in the soundtrack are great. Take a listen to my favorite. The art style, which you have been seeing on camera this entire time, is pixelated, and I'm a sucker for this sort of style. I absolutely love it, and it's what made me get the game to begin with. On the more technical side, I did run into some issues. My game crashed twice at the end of the map, which was very annoying, as I had to run back three times, the original and then one for each crash. The game also has a mechanic tied to its movement. If you're walking fast to one side and then turn to the other, you'll keep sliding in your original direction for a little bit. This has unfortunately gotten me killed more times than I can count, and again, while I understand it was intentional, it's still annoying. The camera also suffered from a lack of smoothness for me occasionally that I can't quite explain, but you've probably seen it throughout the video as well as right now. All in all though, I had a really good time with Anglerfish. The game can be hilarious at times, and while it does have a couple of jump scares, it was still mostly free from those while still keeping the horror theme, which I appreciate. I'll definitely be revisiting the game when the updates release. Fingers crossed the story doesn't disappoint. Alright, now for the YouTube stuff. If you enjoyed the video, if it was useful to you, please do leave a like and subscribe as it really helps out my channel's growth. And if you feel so inclined, please do comment as well, especially if you get the game, I want to know what you think of it. I love interacting with all of you and I'm always open to receiving feedback both on my editing and my review itself. That aside, I hope you have a good weekend and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!